and welcome to another Cigar Box Guitar Lesson. So this song, absolute classic, needs no introduction. It is the granddaddy of guitar music. You know, it's influenced so many songs, uh, so many guitarists, so many styles. Uh, is of course Chuck Berry's Johnny Be Good. So works quite nicely on uh, on three strings. I've, I've kind of omitted some of the lead parts from the introduction just because I'm playing on my own. Uh, I, we, we could potentially look at filling it out a little bit in a later video, but uh, we've we, we've got the the solo intro, and then we're like straight into the rhythm parts. It's it, it works the best, I think, uh, as a single guitar player. And the original song is actually in B flat tuning, which is slightly unusual. But what you could do is you could fit a set of strings and go for normal uh, E B E tuning we've we've done some lessons last year looking at various songs in that tuning and then you could knock it down by the equivalent of one fret so that would be then b e flat b flat e flat and how we're playing the song here would work perfectly uh, you could play along with chuck himself but let's get tuned up for this lesson. So I'm still in standard uh, G, D, G here, just because I'm, I'm getting the most out of these strings. So we've got G. We've got D. And we've got G. And so if you want to play along with the track, you can download a completely free PDF song chart. So it's available from the website. There's text description below or there's a link above. But let's just get straight on with learning the song. So I reckon one of the things that makes the, the riff and the whole song, to be honest, uh, sound so great is a really nice sort of mix of major and minor pentatonic licks. So like I said, we're in the key of D, which is the middle string in this, this tuning. So here's a major pentatonic, open middle string, two, four on the middle string, fret two, fret four, fret seven on the high G, the top string. Okay, and here's a very quick minor pentatonic. Open, three, five, or I could play, instead of that fret five on the middle string, I could play the open, open G as well. And then fret two, and then fret five, and then octave on the top string. Play the open instead. Okay, so that those those two scales get mixed up a lot. So I'm going to slide in with my third finger to fret four on the middle string, and then I'm going to play two four on the top string, and then I want to get right up to seven. You could bar it. I I find it better to control. To, to control it if I use two fingers, so fret seven, fret seven on the high and the middle D. Uh, if I'm playing it on six string, I actually bar it, but it just works better on this guitar. So slide four, two, four, slide with both of those. So I'm doing a little strum across those two strings. Now we have a slightly funny rhythm here. It's basically dum 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 dum. Completely even, what you call half beat notes, but you can kind of group them together so you can put a slight emphasis by actually sliding. So you can go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, three threes are nine, so we have eight half beat notes in a bar. So if we play nine half beat notes, it means we've finished on beat one of the next bar. We go like this, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Or count it, one and two and three and four and one. One and two and three and four and one. Dead simple, dead effective. You can go after that, five, four, two, on the top string, so I'm, I'm just going to use fingers three, two, one. You can use your little finger if that's a stretch. Three, two, one, and then middle string, 
two, sorry, fret three to fret four, and then finish on the open. So that's five, four, two, middle string, three, four, open. Finishes on beat four. One and two and three and four. Okay, let's try from this angle. So Now the, the the strumming here, so, so they're they're triplets, aren't they? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, well, rhythmically they're not triplets, but they're grouped in threes. So I I find if I go down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, just seems to work quite nicely. It flows quite nicely, and and also I'm trying to use because it, it is quite fast, quite a lot of alternate picking. Learn the notes first, but I'm going up, down, up, down, up, down. Because I'm, I'm leading with an up onto that one because I've finished up there on beat one. Up, down, up, down, up. Before the beat, got three notes there. So we've got one, the, the half beat notes, so we've got one, two, three, four, and one. Double stops, bang on beat one. So I might, if, if you want to think about the picking, I might go up, down, up. Because again, speed it up. It flows much better when you play a bit faster. Obviously you want to go slowly to start with. But that's the first bit, and then... Uh, we want to go up to fret 7 here because we're in the key of D and we need to play a we need to play a D chord for a whole bar and again half beat notes one two three four and then one more part of the riff so another little slide in to four again on the middle string, two, four, two, little sort of step over, two, open, four on the bass string, back to the low, at the middle D again. And that is one and two and three and four. And so it takes, it fills an entire bar. And that, that's it, that's that's the intro. So it goes and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and. So you can do a little bit of uh, palm muting particularly on, so if you remember, um, so m mostly dampen the bass string. Uh, it w this works when we get onto the bridge as well, actually. Because um, when, if, if you want to accent a chord, you don't want to strum every single one. You want to go chord, bass, bass, bass. So I'm, I might do a strum on beat one, and then another one on, that was beat four. One, two, three, four. Obviously, Chuck carried on and did some great sort of licks over the, the, the other eight bars because, again, it's a 12 bar cycle. It's uh, rock and roll is often just like fast blues without the shuffle, without the swing. It's very straight, da, 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 da. Um, but it's still got that form. However, if we're playing it on our own, we kind of like lose the song if we if we go for the uh, 
the, 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 the licks. So I'm, I'm just doing a slightly pared down version here. So as soon as we've done that, when the band kicks in, we're jumping over to rhythm guitar duties, which is G. Now that's a real classic sort of blues bass line uh, riff sort of chord thing, isn't it? So it's, there's a G, G power chord, add on fret two on the middle string. One, two, three, four, put it on on beats two and four. Again, you can hopefully hear I'm doing quite a bit of palm muting on, on the bass string. So, I'll announce the G, give it a big strum, one, two, three, four, and again when I add that note in I'll pronounce, do a more pronounced strum, but a lot of the other strums are more sort of chugging away on the bass strings, so it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, you can strum it twice uh, as a loud one, because it's two bars of G uh, on beat one of both bars, one, two, You can just do it on the first one. One, two, three, four, two, three, four. Whichever one you think sounds the best is absolutely fine. Back up to D. Same trick, so we've got to hold that bar on. Now, again, there are plenty of, including um, Sunshine You Love, but there are plenty of lessons sort of explaining bars in a bit more detail. Hold that on all the way through, and then you're going to add an extra note on fret 9, because that's fret 7, the middle string. Get that sound, okay. And one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Put it in exactly the same place, beat 2, beat 4. Again, plenty of palm muting, and accent those. And then we're on to the third chord. So in, in, in a D, a blues in the bar, um, key of D, the main chord is D up here. And then it goes to G, which is open. That's the, the second chord that we play. We go back to the D. And then finally, the third chord we're going to introduce is fret 2. And that is an A. Same trick. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. finish it off with two bars of D so you, you often don't get the sort of bluesy type turnaround you know that 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 type of thing or um, that's much more of a blues sound in, in rock and roll they, they quite often emit that and so it, it's a super super simple 12 bar form so it's not got a turnaround and it just blocks out the chords. So it's four bars of G at the beginning, uh, sorry, D. So all of the intro riff was, was over the four bars of D. And then I joined in with the, the G chord, played that for two bars, back to the D for two bars, and then to the A for two bars. So it doesn't even drop down to G, it just stays on A for two bars, and back to D for two bars and then do it all again. Okay, so the entire intro, let's do it from this angle, so the entire intro would sound a bit like this, so one, two, three. Second bar. A. Back to D. And then, when you get onto the verse, it is all of that except that he's singing so we want like minimal um, 
lead guitar over the top so it doesn't get in the way of the vocals and, and so you just four bars one Just to kind of accent, make certain strums sound out, you can even do the odd. It's mostly downs, but you can do the odd little up. So you can go one, two, three, four, and one. You could do it right at the end of the bar on the very last half beat note. And that can just ring out, because if we're only muting this one, like if we catch these, hopefully they'll still ring out, even when we go back to chugging away on the bass. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like that, okay? And then exactly the same structure through the entire song, but you can add a couple of riffs. So for the chorus, we can do that, which sounds quite good. So we're going into fret seven on the middle string and we're going to fret five, so you've got to make sure you can hold those two as, as a little chord, so that third finger's not blocking off the top string. So it's seven, five, seven, five. I'm going to eventually add my little finger in on fret seven of the top string. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four. and two and three and so it comes in just after beat one let's just check that from this angle so <clears throat> you do a little slide in and I might go down up down up down something like that because it's often easy to pick on what you call the outside of the strings. So down, up, down, up, it's a bit, bit more secure. So timing wise, if we go from towards the end of the verse, so the last four bars are A. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and two, and three, and four. One, two, three, four. So that riff is actually coming in, that's the first thing that's played on the uh, the start of the chorus 12 bar. So right from the very end of the verse again, so the last two bars we've got one, two, three, four, here we go, two, three, four. Now because we're coming in just off the beat with this riff. I'm actually stopping off the beat with the chords. Now, I don't know if everyone does this. It's just I uh, I quite often play this live in a band on, on a six string and, and there's only one guitar in the band. So I'm, I'm kind of like lob lobbing this riff in and, and trying to keep the chords going. And so it helps to, to sort of like imply the changes. And I'm, I'm going to go like this, one, two, three, four, up. Because we just said you can do those ups to accent some of the chords. So one, two, three, four, up. Start of the chorus. One, two, three. Now this time, we want to change to the G when we, um, after four bars of the chorus, just to do one, two, three, four. Just so we kind of know it's changed chord, even though we're playing this riff over the top. Uh, if we just do one stab on the chord, it, it, we, we can hear that it changed and then we play the riff and go back to the chord. And so I'm gonna do that all the way through. I'm gonna do one upstroke chord change just before the bar 
just before I play the riff in the choruses. One. This is the end of the verse. So one, two, three, four, D. One, two, three, this time I'm gonna change to G. Back to D. Then change to A. And then that's it, he's finished the riffs at this point. So like the last three bars, we don't have any riff. Okay. Only other thing is, now if I'm not doing the solo, the lead part for the intro, I'm definitely not doing all of the lead part for the actual solo in the middle, but we could do the break because the break sounds ace. So that that's a pretty iconic little lick, and it's actually not too bad to play in this in this particular tuning because uh, we've got a couple of open strings. So you can do a, a lead into it the same as what you did for the intro four two four. That works really well, and then slide in with those two fingers fret seven one and two. Open top string, open G. That is three to four, picking three, hammering on to four, and then playing the open D. Little pick up into it. One, two, three, open hammer. That's the riff. Do that again. One, two, three. Open hammer. So hopefully you're okay with hammer ons. So that's not moving, is it? I'm tapping this one down. I'm not trying to do a seesaw. I'm keeping that in place. You can you can use that, those two fingers if it's easier. Works just as well. So fine, that's all you're doing, you're just playing those two fretted ones, so whichever fingers work. Um, you do that twice and then the, the, the gap, the, the riff kind of gets compressed. So it's one and... So we can now fit two riffs into one bar. So that is one and two and three and four. And that's an entire bar, but then we go one and two and three and four and and then why not sounds great just little slide offs from uh, fret seven so with these don't don't keep the pressure on you basically slide down and at some point just relax the pressure so i'm still touching the strings but um i've just lost the note that was that bass one ringing out there it's gone there, isn't it? Four of them on the beat. One, two, three, four. Now that's the first four bars, so it's exactly the same idea as the intro. You just join in with the G for two, D for two, A for two, D for two. That's your 12 bar. So let's just check that. I do the little pickup into it. Um, so, okay, so this is the end of, say, uh, the verse. slower so one two three one two three shorter and so 
so I was actually solo carrying on over that. But again, if we're doing a single guitar version, we need to just play the rhythm guitar parts just to keep the structure of the song going so we don't sound like we're kind of floating somewhere without a band. Okay, I hope that was fun. Great fun to play. I played this one live, really good. Everyone always loves it. So um, I hope you enjoy learning this one and I hope it's not too difficult. Uh, you can maybe go a little bit more slowly to start with, but we will be back very soon with some more classic blues here on Coda Guitar. <laughs>